What's up guys? Today, I've got my hands on the Nokia Streaming Box 8000. Now this is a 4K TV box running official Android TV OS with Chromecast and Google Assistant and you can stream 4K legit across the board. This 4K TV box has dropped considerably in price. When it launched, it was around £99. You can now pick this up for £59. So in this video, we are going to find out if the Nokia Streaming Box 8000 is still worth buying in 2023. But first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual. We have an HDMI cable, a power supply, and I'll give you a quick close up of the voltage information, two AAA batteries for the remote control. So we have a full featured, full size remote. It's got shortcuts for YouTube, Prime, Netflix, and Google Play. You can see the Google Assistant button here as well. So there is a built-in microphone. And this is a Bluetooth slash infrared remote control, two in one. So the box itself has a smooth matte finish with the Nokia logos engraved in the center. On the front, we've got nothing, just an LED display. And I'll show you what that looks like on the screen. If we keep going, we've got a USB 3 port on the side. And on the back, we've got a power socket, 100 megabyte LAN, HDMI 2.0, We've got AV out, SBDIF, and we've got a USB-C port. If we keep going, nothing on this side, and that brings us back to the front. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the box. So this box is powered by the S905X3 quad core, along with the Mali G31 integrated graphics. RAM and storage, we have two gigs of DDR3 RAM and eight gigs of eMMC storage. We have five gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and a 100 megabyte LAN. This is running official Android TV OS. We're gonna see which version. I'm assuming it's version 10 with HDMI version 2.0, and this supports up to 4K60 with 5.1, 7.1 pass-through. <laughs> Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took exactly 38 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And here is the ever so familiar Android TV. And it does look like this is version 10. I don't know about you guys, but I actually prefer a TV version 10 the most. I always found that this version ran the smoothest with less bloat, with less adverts. It's a more condensed version than the new one. And it's very simple and easy to navigate and use. Now, if we head over to the main system settings and go to device preferences and check out the system storage info, you will see that this box has 8 gigs of internal storage with 3.5 gigs free to use. And if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is running Android TV version 10. And you can see the kernel, build number and security patch info, etc. Under system, you will find low power sleep mode. Under favorite app, you can select any app to open every time you press the custom button on the remote. Under sound, if we check out audio output, it will give you the option to activate 7.1 pass through. Under display settings, we have our HDR settings, which is on by default, but you can also switch it to auto. You also have screen resolution and screen position settings. And just to show you, the box can switch to best resolution automatically, and you can see the current display mode. Furthermore, we have HDMI CEC settings. This is Android TV OS, so you also have Google Assistant and Google Chromecast built in. So as you can see, I've casted this video from my iPhone 14 Pro, so Chromecast is working as it should. And you also have smart RCU control. So the box can automatically detect your TV and configure the remote to control some of TV functions like power and volume up and down, etc. And all of that is done during the setup process. Now let's have a look at the complete system apps. Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I have not installed anything yet and you have quite a few apps to get you started, including YouTube, Disney Plus, you've got Netflix, Plex and the Google Play Store. Now this is the TV version of the Play Store designed for Android TV OS. So you are slightly limited to what apps are available, but you can of course sideload all your favorite apps. Now this box does not support any screen mirroring natively but you can download Air Screen completely free of charge from the Play Store, and that will let you mirror your iOS devices, iPhones, iPads, etc. Okay, so now I'm gonna play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, and I will be doing this with the pre-installed MX player, and later on, I will be using VLC player for the 4K60 with HDR files. So starting off with the usual high bitrate Jellyfish 4K sample, that's 160 megabits per second, and the video is playing back quite smooth. 
I then tested the 180 megabit per second video sample, and that also done quite well. And to really push this box to its limit, I tested the 400 megabit per second sample, and it basically stuttered and played back in slow-mo. And thereafter, I tested a few 4K60 video formats with various HDR, and they all played back great with no issues. I also tried playing back a AV1 video sample to see if the Kodak works and it did indeed play. So AV1 Kodak is supported. So that was 4K videos from USB. Now let's move on to the 4K YouTube test. So as you can see, 4K60 with HDR is supported and plays very well with no dropped frames. I also did a quick voice search and that also works great. So let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. Nick Fury. My favorite one-eyed man of intrigue. How goes it out there? Uh, you know, cold, no air. You're going to die. Maybe not. Goodbye to you, my trusted friend. What are you doing? I'm making chocolate, of course. How do you like it? Dark, white, nutty, absolutely insane. Many people. Something's coming. Something dark. You and I both know who could help you with this. She's still... So now it's time to test Netflix and this box does support official 4K Netflix with HDR. Unfortunately, Dolby Vision is not supported and I did test it on my main Dolby Vision television. But unfortunately, Dolby Vision does not work, but Dolby Atmos sound is supported. Next up, Amazon Prime Video and I was able to stream 4K HDR with Dolby Atmos. Again, Dolby Vision is not supported. Again. But the wind Furthermore, Disney Plus also supported 4K with HDR10 and 5.1 sound. Inseparable from our kids. So all in all, 4K streaming across the board, but there is no support for Dolby Vision and some support for Dolby Atmos. So that's streaming out of the way. Let's go ahead and check out some gaming. And due to insufficient space, we're going to try some basic games starting off with Crossy Roads. Moving on swiftly, so for you advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine Level 3, and here is Ada64 showing you the clock speeds and graphics information, which states Mali G31, and you can see this is running Android 10, and the device does not come rooted as standard. I did also test out the internal disk speeds, and you can see the results, read speeds of 146 megabytes per second, and write speeds of 48 megabytes per second. For the internet speed test, I ran it twice. First, we tested the Wi-Fi and achieved 315 megabits per second download and 62 megabits per second upload. Then for the second test, I connected an ethernet cable and switched off Wi-Fi. And then as you can see, we achieved download speeds of 80 and upload speeds of 64 megabits per second. The 100 megabit ethernet limit means we could not achieve our top download speeds, which is usually around 500 megabits per second. And for some context, here is my iPhone on the table right next to this TV box and connected to the same Wi-Fi. And you can see the impressive speed we are achieving on the Wi-Fi when compared to this TV box. But even saying that with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi on this box, we're getting a pretty decent connection. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 141 and multi core score of 440. And in the Antutu test, we achieved 91K. So let's see how this box compares with the other new TV boxes of this year. So here it is, my top Android TV box performance chart for 2023, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And the ranking is based on Antutu benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see that the Nokia Streaming Box 8000 takes position 18 with a benchmark score of 91K. I've also given this box an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5. So from this chart, you can see the performance scores and my overall rating all color coded to make it easier for you to read. 
Now, you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it, guys. That was the Nokia Streaming Box 8000. And here are my thoughts, starting off with the caveats. This TV box has no screen mirroring app installed natively. You're limited to a 100 megabyte Ethernet port. RAM and storage is on the lower side at 2 plus 8 GB. And there is no support for Dolby Vision. But on the positive side, this box is a very good 4K streaming box and it's licensed to stream 4K across the board. Nearly all official apps will give you 4K HDR streaming. Not only that, even the unofficial third party apps will give you 4K streaming. You have the AV1 Kodak, which works well. You have ATV version 10, which I feel is the best version of ATV. Wi-Fi speeds were pretty decent and stable. You have a USB 3 port to play with and the price is not bad for what you're getting. So yes, this is not Nokia latest box it's a box that i just didn't get a chance to review or test and i was always curious about the performance and when i saw the price had dropped quite a bit i thought it'd be a good opportunity to pick it up and review it and see how it performs with the other new boxes of 2023 and to be honest with the s905 x3 the nokia 8000 actually does better than most of the new releases of 2023. Now, quick message to the people. Yes, I am gonna review the Xiaomi Mi Box second gen. It has been delivered and I am currently testing it. So stay tuned as it's coming very soon and I do apologize for the delay. Meanwhile, thank you for watching, like, sub and follow and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.